Joining us now is Philippe Nassif, Executive Director of In Defense of Christians. Philippe, what, is this, what do you think the Egyptian government needs to do to protect Coptic Christians? Well, I think, first of all, the Egyptian government needs to really double down on the existing patrols that they have outside of all of the churches in Egypt, outside of the monasteries. I think, moreover, they need to start to communicate a little bit better with the Coptic community in Egypt. So, for example, with, the, with this motorcade or these buses of pilgrims that were going from the monastery or toward the monastery, there should have been advanced communication. So there was an extra patrol that was maybe escorting that convoy to that monastery to protect these pilgrims. It's stuff like that that we haven't really seen happen come from the uh, Egyptian government, and they really need to double down on protecting these, these, uh, these innocent people. Persecution of Christians has been a problem in Egypt for a long time, and now with the growing number of terror attacks, do you think Christians can realistically live in the country without fear? Without fear, unfortunately, I don't think so. I think that the problem that we have right now is uh, can they continue to exist in the country uh, writ large? Uh, right now, the, the uh, President Sisi he needs to really double down on the efforts that he's already undertaken since taking office to protect these populations, a vulnerable population of people. Uh, we are very disappointed in what he's done so far. This is a disturbing pattern that we have seen emerge in, in Egypt. I could easily say that Coptics are far worse off nowadays than they ever have been uh, in a very long time in Egypt. So we're really concerned about the future uh, existence of this community uh, unless something changes uh, immediately. Earlier this week, you applauded the meeting between President Trump and Pope Francis. You're asking the U.S. government to do more to stop the global network of terrorism and violent extremism. What else do you think the U.S. government can do? Well, I think the United States needs to put pressure on a lot of our allies in the Middle East. I think the Gulf states, for example, we have uh, wealthy uh, businessmen that uh, live in the Gulf and that finance privately or give donations privately to more militant forms of, uh, or militant groups, not just across the Middle East, but we'd say across the world. Uh, I think that the way that people are uh, educated in some of these Islamic schools uh, needs to change. I think that the textbooks that they're reading uh, paints the West in a very, very negative light. I think that it distorts history. Uh, I think there needs to be uh, much more pressure coming from the United States government on our Gulf allies, uh, and then ob obviously working with intelligence agencies uh, across uh, Europe, across the Islamic world, to double down and find the people that are responsible uh, for planning to carry out attacks, who's funding them, and then obviously the folks that are guilty of carrying out attacks to bring them to justice. Last time you were here on the program, you talked about the importance of safe zones, especially right. when it comes to Syria and Iraq specifically. How do you think those safe zones are doing, or the, the push for safe zones, is that coming together? Would that, is that really going to help? It's coming together. It's actually coming together quite nicely on, uh, on the Hill in Congress. Uh, there's a lot of members of Congress that are starting to support the idea of creating safe zones in Syria. The uh, current situation in Syria is unsustainable. Uh, there needs to be some kind of a movement toward a solution to that conflict, and we believe that creating a safe zone to protect civilians uh, maybe close to the Turkish border and then uh, close to the Jordanian border is a good step in the right direction. Uh, I think that it will also uh, help protect the Christian community, the other religious minorities in, in Syria, uh, from continuing to be driven out because they're not just being targeted by ISIS, but they're caught in the, in the crossfire between the rebels and the government as well. A lot of reasons that our EWTN viewers will keep continuing to pray for the people of the Middle East. Philip Nassif, Executive Director of In Defense of Christians, thanks so much for talking with us about Thank it. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it.